Okay, so in this video, we're going to review some of the key concepts in electricity that we've met so far. So let's start by talking about the different quantities or things that you can measure that we've met so far. So current is the number of charges per second passing through a point. Potential difference is the energy transferred from each charge by a component, so the energy taken away from each charge by a component. EMF is the amount of energy transferred to each charge by a power source. So the power source's role is to give energy to the charges as well as uh, cause a current to flow. And resistance is the potential difference across a component divided by the current passing through that component. Okay, so those are our quantities. Let's actually start exploring some of the rules that circuits follow. So without doing a calculation, rank the circuits from least total resistance to most, explaining your reasoning. Okay, so this is the actual order. So the lowest resistance circuit is circuit C, uh, then it goes circuit A, and then it goes circuit B. So let's actually explore why. And the key thing that I've used is the fact that we've got this two ohm resistor in all of them, and then it's been slightly tweaked around that two ohm resistor. So the first thing that I used is adding components in series always increases the total resistance. So if we compare circuit A and circuit B, we've added in a 10 ohm resistor in circuit B. If we add resistors, we increase the resistance. So the resistance of B must be bigger than circuit A. That's the first logical step. The second rule I've used is adding components in parallel always decreases the total resistance. And it does this because it's essentially given more pathways for charge to move around your circuit. So using this, we know circuit C must have lower resistance than circuit A because we've added a thousand ohm resistor in parallel with the two ohm resistor. And therefore, we, that's how we know it goes C, A, B. And it genuinely doesn't matter how big a resistor you add. If you add a resistor in parallel, you decrease the total resistance regardless of its size. Okay, so let's actually verify that statement by calculating the resistance of uh, B and C. So we know the resistance of A is just going to be 2. So for B, they're in series, so we can just add the resistors together. We get 12 ohms, which is clearly bigger than 2, so good so far. Circuit C, we need to use our reciprocal rule. So 1 over the total resistance is going to be 1 over 2 plus 1 over 1000, which is just over a half. So then to get the resistance of C, we have to flip that over and we can see we get a number that's just less than 2. So even though it rounds to 2 to the appropriate number of significant figures, that's clearly just under 2. So circuit C is lower resistance than circuit A. But because the thousand row resistor is so big, it's not very much less than 2. OK. So determine the current through the two ohm resistors in each of the circuits if the power sources have an EMF of 6 volts. So circuit A is fairly straightforward. Um, the potential difference across the resistor is 6. Its resistance is 2, so it gives us a current of 3. Circuit B, uh, the potential difference of 6 volts is across both resistors, so the total potential difference across the 2 and the 10 is 6 volts. So we need to divide that by the total resistance between those points, 12, and that gives us our current of half an amp. For circuit C, the potential difference across the 2 ohm resistor is 6 its resistance is 2, so you can see that the current through the 2 ohm resistor is still 3. So adding the 1000 ohm resistor had no effect whatsoever on the current going through the 2 ohm resistor, which is exactly what we'd expect to find. Because you should have seen that adding bulbs in parallel has no effect on the brightness of the individual bulbs in the circuit. Finally, determine potential difference across the two resistors in each of the circuits, again with an EMF of 6 volts. So A is really simple. We've only got one component, so it has to be 6. If you input 6 joules to every charge, you must take out 6 joules from each charge um, in the circuit. In circuit B, we need to use this version of the resistance equation. So we know the current going through the 2 ohm resistor is half an amp because we just calculated it. We know its resistance is 2 
ohms. So if we multiply those together, we get the potential difference of one volt. If we applied that process to the 10 ohm resistor, we'd have 0 0.5 times 10, giving us five volts, and then five plus one equals six. So that works. For circuit C, uh, we again, we know the potential difference is 6 volts. Because they're in parallel, so the, the EMF is going to be equal to the potential difference across each of them separately. So the potential difference across the 2 ohm is 6, and the potential difference across the 1000 ohm is 6. It's the current that splits between them. Determine the current supplied by the cell in each of the circuits. So the first one is pretty easy. We already calculated the current through the 2 ohm resistor, so that must be the same as the current through the cell. Circuit B, again, we already calculated the current through the 2 ohm. It's a series circuit, so the current's the same everywhere, so it should be 0 0.5 amps through the cell as well. Circuit C, we need to do a, a little bit more calculation because we don't know the current going through the 1000 ohm resistor at the moment. So if we do 6 divided by 1000, that will tell us the current through the 10 the 1000 ohm resistor even, the current through the 2 ohm resistor we already calculated, add those together and we get the current that the cell must be providing. So you can see that by adding that resistor in parallel, our cell has to provide a slightly larger current. So general rule, adding resistance in series causes power source current to decrease. You saw in this scenario it went from 3 down to 0 0.5 by adding the 10 ohm resistor, but as a general rule, it's always true it series resistors make power source current decrease. Parallel resistors make power source current increase. It make, means the circuit demands a slightly higher current from the power source. For circuit C, what rule do the current through the power source, the 2 ohm resistor and the 1000 ohm resistor follow? Um, well, it's that the power source current is equal to the sum of the current through the resistors. So current in the cell is equal to the current through the 2 ohm plus the current through the 1000 ohm. Resistor B, the rule that's being followed is the current is the same everywhere in a series circuit. So the cell current is equal to the 2 ohm current is equal to the 10 ohm current. For circuit B, what rule does the power source EMF and the potential differences follow? The well, power source EMF is equal to the sum of the resistor potential differences. So EMF of the cell is equal to the potential difference across the 2 ohm plus the potential difference across the 10 ohm resistor. So looking more generally at resistance now, so if we have a given wire, it usually is, if we increase its length, its resistance should increase proportionally to the length, so we get a graph like this. If we can increase the cross-sectional area, it should decrease in an inverse proportional style way. So the bigger the area, cross-sectional area gets, the lower the resistance gets in an inversely proportional way. So what does that actually mean? Well, if you double the length of a conductor, because it's proportional, that means resistance doubles. If you double area, because it's inversely proportional, that means resistance halves, so it's by the same factor. If the diameter is doubled, that makes the cross-sectional area four times bigger, because the cross-sectional area is proportional to the diameter squared. So area is four times bigger, so resistance must be quarter of what it was before. So then looking at a couple of different components in terms of how they behave. A fixed resistor, you should get a directly proportional graph between current and potential difference. In a filament lamp, you should get this graph of a decreasing gradient, indicating that the resistance is increasing at higher potential differences. So how do we actually verify those graphs that we've just seen? Well, there's two different ways we could go about testing them. So we could use a circuit like this. So this has got a variable power source, which allows us to change the potential difference across our component and measure the current flowing through it. That would allow us to plot an IV graph. Or alternatively, we could use a variable resistor. So we've got a fixed power source, a variable resistor, and that again, that would allow us to change the potential difference and see the impact on the current. So again, would allow us to plot an IV graph to verify what the component actually is and how it behaves. And that completes this video looking at the key concepts in a circuit.